Let's say you have a female vocalist that happens to have a, a shrill voice. Well, you're going to look for a mic that maybe doesn't accent the high so much. That's why a Neumann M49 might be popular for a lot of girl singers because it's got this really smooth high end. Maybe it's, you know, uh, if you looked at it on a frequency response, there's probably some dips in the 3 to 5K neighborhood, maybe. I don't know that. Or it has an exceptional low end that gets accented a little better than the high end does. So if you know your microphones, they're the key to life. They are. The right mic on the right input, a magic occur occurs. It really does. When you find the right microphone for the right input, let's say acoustic guitar. Acoustics are like voices. They all sound different. Some sound incredible. Some sound not good. But they're all different. What I love to use on an acoustic guitar is I will take a U67 somewhere near the hole because the 67 has a great low end in it and it's got a nice high end too. Then I'll take either a Neumann 582 or maybe a Hiller 91, which is an incredible microphone, somewhere on the neck, equal distant from the guitar as the 67. And I turn up those faders, and it sounds incredible. It sounds beautiful. If there's too much low end, I bring up the neck a little. If there's too much high end, I bring up the 67 a little. Now I'm not using EQ. Now I'm not having to, you know, and now I've got such a great sounding acoustic sound without doing anything except using the right microphones in the right place I avoided now having to use other things to help give me a great sound. People use a lot of compression. Sometimes the compressor adds a nice warmth, like an 1176. Sometimes it does, it does this beautiful rounding thing, like a Fairchild. But generally, it manipulates the sounds that you've already got in a way that hopefully sounds better to you than without it. Otherwise, don't use it. If it doesn't make you go, wow, don't do it. You know, if you are fighting something, whether it's a kick drum sound, you know what? Try a different mic. Try a different mic placement. You've got to stay creative don't get bogged down and this is how everybody does it and because that that's a drag they're popular they sound great number one they sound great and you know rhythm mics i love rhythm mics i love them in general there are some classic ribbons that i love 44s and 77s of course the KU3A could be my favorite rhythm mic on planet earth possibly the skunk mics sound great but the KU3A the 10001 is really a great mic uh, the Telefunk and Elam 201s are from 1932 they built these things they're a chunk of iron but they sound great I'll use them as room mics so AEA is building great microphones these days and they have a, you know, people love ribbons on electric guitars and in a lot of different applications, you know. And ribbons have always been popular over the years. But AEA is doing a really great job these days. They are. There's no denying it. I mean, I would assume, and I could be wrong, but I would assume that AEA is probably selling more ribbon mics than any other company. They should be. They sound the best. This is a really popular mic, and every time I see these on overheads for drums a lot, but I'm sure people are using them for other applications. A great mic is a great mic is a great mic, you know? I just want it to sound, I just want it to sound as good as when I walk in that room and I hear that guy playing that acoustic guitar. I want it to come across after I've recorded it the same way. 
And uh, it takes great microphones to make that happen. And a good room. You have to have a good room, acoustically a good room.